Alrighty, this is a Breville Infuser BS840. Uh, I can't remember if it's the newer model or the older model. I've had it for four or five years probably. Um, so this is the um, little video on a flow control using a, a Lutron um, uh, incandescent light dimmer 600 watt single pole. That's this little dude here. Um, basically, did a little mod there to mount that. Trying to make it look clean to get it to flush mount on the inside. So on this side, you can see this plastic. This is the actual body of the machine. The metal is just a, uh, you know, like a flashing. But um, this is some pretty serious plastic. It has a bunch of little ridges running on the other side of it to reinforce it. So I basically had to cut that away and I was trying to cheat and uh, do it without all the tools. To be honest, something like a soldering iron to melt it away would have been the would have been the best bet, but I didn't have one handy. So I used a little battery powered sawzall, Milwaukee. Uh, and then they uh, I believe it or not, I used the quarter inch drill bit just to to chisel along it going at this direction to knock that out. That's only if you want to flush mount this thing. If you want to do an external box like some other people have done on some of the gages and stuff, that's that's cool too. But you can see these little dimples here. That's from where my drill bit ran into the inside of the housing. I didn't punch through, but it made these little ripples. I thought I was going to be able to do it perfectly. But anyway, so it doesn't look too bad. Um, the, that unit's like nine bucks at any local hardware store or whatever. Uh, it came with an, an almond and an off-white knob. I'm spray painting one of them silver, hopefully, hopefully to match this control, but it still sticks off the machine further than the knob, so you'll still see this brass nut on here and this, this plastic here. So I'll probably just touch that up with some of the same silver spray paint. Try not to get it on the red, but... Anywho, so it's simple mods. Um, I know some people have I've seen on, ask on uh, how to modify the o, OPV, the overpressure valve on these machines. Um, there's a ton of stuff on other other models and the more expensive Brevels, but um, this little guy, I think, the Infuser, um, it's kind of like just the espresso machine section of the Barista Express. Doesn't have that that cheapo grinder that the Barista Express has, so. Anyway, there was a zip tie on here. I just clipped it with some little snippers. You can work this, the easiest way to work this hose off without tearing it is a small flathead screwdriver. Come in from this angle, pop that guy off, and there's, see these factory paint marks here. This part that the hose is over rotates. So rotating it clockwise would give you more pressure. Obviously, people want to lower the, the pressure on this valve for these machines and set it to somewhere close to between six and nine bar. You know, they're factory set like 12, 13, something like that, I think I've heard other people say. I don't have one of those porta filters with the pressure valve to test this one, but I kind of have a feel for it just based on using it for years. But So I rotated this counterclockwise one and a half turns. Easiest way to do that is once you back this hose off, you have to clip the zip tie that would have been here. I have another one I'm gonna put back on, just a little mini zip tie. Back this hose off with a small flathead screwdriver and then grab it from this angle with needle nose pliers. Grab hold, you'll see it work, It would work just like a small crescent wrench could do it as well, but just grab it and then go counterclockwise one and a half turns. And that's gonna get your, your needle. I'll, I'll, I'll do a continuation video uh, of this thing in use with the mods, but Right by the R of the espresso is where this was hitting when I made that modification last night. And today I just stopped and got this little dimmer at a local hardware store. And so here's the rotary pump down here, kind of hard to see. But this connector with the black shrink wrap, two blue wires coming out of it, was on this terminal where this blue insulated connector is. I used a pair of needle nose pliers to pull that off of there. And then all I did was get some 16 gauge stranded insulated wire, a male uh, connector. I crimped that on. I used butt splices here. And these are the factory wires from the dimmer. I think either side doesn't matter. 
just go to one of the black wires and then the other one same thing I put a butt splice on this side that comes down and goes I crimped this blue connector on and put it back in place so you do not want to cut into these blue wires because they are the 120 volts out of the controller that normally just daisy chained when when this black shrink wrapped connector was on this terminal here where the blue one is now these blue wires daisy chain up to your um, solenoids here so and then from the solenoid on up to the, the um, thermo block so you don't want to interrupt those you definitely do not want to be dimming those voltages so you're taking a splice off of before it goes on to those other devices to come up to your dimmer and then the output of the dimmer the other side of it back into the 120 of the of the rotary pump this side is the 48 volt dc control voltage off of it goes through like a yellow wire down here some sort of a crimp connector it comes off this orange wire here so you don't need to monkey with that uh, that's just um, you know essentially I don't know if that's a uh, a feedback telling telling the controller what speed the pumps are rotating at or how many rotations it's made it's probably something along those lines but uh, it again it could just be um, you know an on off voltage a control voltage so anywho um, that's basically the mod uh, I haven't seen any other videos so I figured I would do this one I'll try and get it linked onto some coffee forums and stuff but um, pretty simple and uh, I'll, I'll do a continuation here with it um, in, in effect once I have it all back together uh, in case anyone's wondering there were quite a few little screws to get out of here um, the trickiest one was this guy here next to the water inlet where the tank sits there's a little red plastic plug on, uh, or you know whatever color machine you have there'll be a plastic plug in here that was a kind of a trick to get out I ended up having success with a, uh, a razor blade edge I just got the point down under there and kind of worked around it it wasn't pretty but I couldn't. I didn't have any other uh, prying tools with me at hand to to use to get that out with a cleaner look. But who cares? It's in the back of the machine under the water tank. You'll never see it. But I probably won't even put that little thing back in there. But uh, they were all small Phillips head screws. Um, that's what was in there. And there's quite a few that you have to take out to get at all this stuff. Um, the easiest ones. We're on the bottom of the machine. So there are two rails that run along here that have feet in them. One foot has two screws, then there's uh, the screw that holds the whole rail on, and then there's a, a foot that has a single screw. You need to take those off to get to these two, which go into these, that set right there. There's two of those. And that is how you get this whole thing off. There's just you can see these three clips. There's three on the other side. They're holding on to little catches on the inside there. But basically, um, that thing you just want to grab it low, get a good grip on it, and jerk it back just to get it get it loose without breaking the tabs. I actually broke one on the other side because I didn't uh, I wasn't forceful enough with it. So um, there's a few other little screws that you'll you'll come across, but just take your time. Um, you know, there's a few that hold this, the top plate on. So, uh, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll try to try to answer them. I'm not super active on YouTube, but anyway, those are the mods, uh, the OPV, which I might end up raising back up a little bit because the, with this guy functional, we'll see, we'll see how it works. I got to make some espressos and see what the results are like, but anywho, um, that's it. This is, uh, a flow control on a Breville infuser okay so here's the continuation I'll probably just splice these into one video clean me light just came on I don't I don't roll with a dirty espresso machine <laughs> but anywho there's the dimmer um, one of the knobs on it I'm gonna paint that guy silver I think to try and match this over here um, another thing I forgot to mention was there, it's hard to see here, but this little notch right here, there is a screw up inside there. And then over here, 
And there's a hole right here in front of the steam one port. There's a screw up in there. Th those two screws help hold the top on. So you'll need to get those out. I forgot to mention that before. And then of course, after all that, I got to open this up again because I forgot to put a replacement zip tie, mini zip tie on that hose for the OPV valve, which I still want to tinker with that. So not a huge deal, but anywho, um, I was grinding for pour over with this uh, the other day and that's, I haven't used it since. So I don't know if I'm dialed in for an espresso shot or not, which is fine because I'm going to tinker with, with this guy. So who knows if this will turn out all right or not, but purge it a little bit in there. Just a little hot water so you can hear it now. Actually, while it's doing that, listen to this. So, she's a working. The, mod, the flow mod is working. Let's get this guy locked in. And let's see what we can do with it. So, towards me, the way I had this mounted, towards me, all the way is full blast. Uh, the one thing I don't like about this setup is these dimmers. If you can get one that doesn't have this click on, click off feature, like a light switch, do that because if you if you have it clicked in and nothing, you don't hear that rotary pump spin up, then you have one of these and you have it clicked improperly. So, you know, if I fire it up now, it won't do anything. So anyway, that's one thing I kind of don't like about this. Maybe I'll look for another model in the future. Super easy swap. You can't even really see those those dimples from this angle too much, but it just annoys me that they're there. But anywho, here we go. Let's see what happens. Go with a real low pre-infusion. Oh yeah, she's not happy at all. As you can see, the mod is working. Anywho, I'm gonna keep tinkering. Obviously, if you're doing this type of mod, you, you're familiar with pressure profiling, flow profiling, whatever, and that's why you're doing something nerdy like this with your espresso machine. So anyway, it works with just the $9. Make sure you get a single pole Lutron dimmer. Here's the packaging for the one I got. It was nine bucks at my local, local hardware store in Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania. And there you have it. I think the whole thing was super easy. Only took me, I'm an electrician, so I have a little, little bit of a skill set with electronics and a uh, whole mod only took me for that and the OPV valve combined less than an hour. And that was including drilling through the side and knocking out that big hunk of the reinforcing plastic behind this steel panel here. So, all right, let's taste this nasty espresso and then I'm going to keep, keep fooling around with this thing. Uh, any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Thanks.